Good afternoon, everybody. This is Matt with the Low Cash Homestead, and what we're looking at here is a patch where I dug out a whole lot of comfrey. Uh, if you're interested in getting heirloom comfrey, and you can see I have lots and lots of it. If you're interested in getting heirloom comfrey, shoot an email over to the Low Cash Homestead at gmail.com and put comfrey in the subject line. And comfrey plants go for five bucks each, and then I will send you a unlisted link that explains uh, your shipping options. The real reason for this video today is to take a look at some of the garden. So let's go take a look. Here we have our Rhode Island Reds and our production Reds. They're getting pretty big. I keep them in the tractor. Uh, they are actually doing some ground clearing for me. They've got a little bit of work to do. And here I plan on putting our Aztec Red box. Aztec Red is a spinach that is heat tolerant and actually enjoys the heat. So I got them clearing this area out as best as they can for me. They looks like they got a little bit of work to do still. And I don't ever take them out of these tractors, guys. These tractors are where they live. Uh, we move the tractor around, and that's it. You can see back in the back, they have their roosting. I don't have nesting boxes in yet. Um, they're not big enough, and the nesting box I want is a rollout nest box and for my model i think it's about 150 bucks a piece um i'm not going to build a rollout nesting box i simply want the ease and sanitation of a stainless steel nesting box there's also a light in there which we haven't used for a while uh that pipe that runs down there where you see the pipe with the little red um nipples that is the watering system which goes to a bucket which feeds a pipe and so on and so forth over here are or Cornish Cornish cross um, they're doing some ground clearing here as well let's take a look at some of the garden we have our raised boxes these are 18 and a half inches tall we have our cattle panel trellises that connects to the box next door our T post etc you guys have seen that before right here this is our Asian long bean these are our uh, Bonnie Super Sweet 100 tomatoes that go down through here and we have a smaller one there and that one was one of the ones that it was started from seed. I had a hard time with starts this year. I'm not sure. Maybe it was the temperature fluctuations or the constant rain or who knows. Um, the heat mat hot box should have uh, solved that problem but you know maybe I have some redesigns to do there. We have our Bonnie Red Bell and I did lose one uh, right here so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of them and we'll put something else there okay let's move on to the next box this is now these are interplanted okay so this is our asian long bean and our pickling cucumbers the idea is to grow them both up the uh the trellis there and to intergrow them here we have our rutgers tomatoes right here and then here, and they're just coming out because I started those from seed right there. Right there. And right there is our squash plants. The idea is that the squash is going to grow across the ground and help shade that. We still have to build our irrigation and drip tape system, which I have all the drip tape from last year. Uh, drip tape does not like to bend. So our plan is to build this all in with CPVC and then use hose clamps to clamp the drip tape to where we want it to drip because drip tape doesn't bend well and when it doesn't bend well it doesn't work right because it, it, it you ever had to get a kink in your garden hose essentially that's what drip tape does let's take a look at our next box i got a few leftover things over there that we glanced over uh here these are just our kentucky wonders okay actually on this cattle panel over is our Kentucky Wonder pole bean. And then from this candle panel over is more of our pickling cucumbers. And then these guys that are starting to come up here, those are our Royal Burgundies. And that is a type of bush bean. And they, uh, they, they grow purple, but they turn green when you cook them. Let's step over to this box. This box has some experimental stuff in it. These are all thumb watermelons. They're supposed to be watermelons that are just itty bitty tiny and you eat the whole thing, you know, like a, like the size of your thumb, a, a, a snack fruit, like a bite-sized snack fruit. So that's what we have here is our thumb watermelons. And then in the rest of the box, we have bush sugar babies 
and I thought there was another thumb watermelon here, but I guess not right here. There's a thumb watermelon there and everything else in that box is bush sugar babies. Let's go over to, and we're gonna start working our way back towards the beginning here. Okay, so here we have our Bonnie's Green Bell. Uh, it looks like I lost a couple of these too. Um, we have been, maybe I'll, maybe I won't pull them out right now. I guess I'll do that later. Uh, we have our Bonnie's Green Bells there. And I pruned them because I don't want them to be too close to the ground there. So these are our uh, Royal Green Bells here. These are all Bonnie's, all, all Green Bells. And then down the center of it, we planted one roll of Walla Walla onion. Um, I wanted to try onions. Uh, 120 days to, to harvest. I figured I got nothing to lose. Uh, pl plus, I mentioned this before, based on my color-coded companion planting charts, onions should do just fine with peppers. Uh, let's take a look over here. Here, these are our Blue Lake poles here. Pole beans, those are going to climb there. And then interplanted with our Blue Lake pole beans, we also have our pickling cucumbers. The idea is to grow those together. These tiny little tomato plants are a yellow pear tomato. And we've got a few of those right down the middle here. And then in this corner is zucchini. So we have zucchini there, zucchini there. And zucchini there again the idea is with I've lived here five years I've watched how the Sun travels and if I did this right and maybe even if I didn't do it right the zucchini should spread across and shade that helping us to retain our moisture okay back here again uh, a lot of these boxes are mirrored of each other okay so here we have our Asian long beans those are interplanted with cucumbers Okay, to grow up our trellis. And then we have our Rutgers heirloom tomatoes here. And then this is squash, squash, and squash. And again, the idea is that the squash will most likely grow in this direction and provide shading for the ground. And then we're back to um, our first box here, which is our Asian long beans. They're not interplanted with anything in this first box. And then we have our Super Sweet 100s here, which is our Bonnie's. And we have our Bonnie Red Bell here. So that is the primary garden area. And then we have a couple strawberry boxes, which it's probably too late for those. I'm going to put them out anyway because I have a climbing strawberry um, that I found in some exotics books or something. I don't remember. And we're going to put those there. And then let me go show you some of the other parts of the garden, our secondary gardens. And there's more work to do here. Um, after we get cover on these cattle panels, the idea is to grow some of our cold colder climate stuff underneath there. We're going to do an experiments where we grow our, uh, we're going to continue to try and grow some spinaches and some other things underneath that shade. And I'm hoping that, um, you know, maybe it, with a slow bolting variety or something like that, that maybe I can get. I also have um, some lettuce varieties that will extend way into like June and July. I have uh, some Four Seasons and some Sylvia and some other stuff that should be a little bit more heat tolerant for my zone. And the idea is once we get growth on these, then I can put those in. And even if it doesn't work in the heat, then, you know, as the season cools down, then I'll have them um, or I can replant them again um, in that time period. Okay, so let's take a quick walk over to another part of our garden, our secondary garden. And on the way there, I'll show you a little something else that we're doing. Uh, this is back, back at our comfrey area. This is something that I think is probably, I, I, as far as I know, I'm the only person that has it. And I'm going to plant more of it. But this is a hot weather type of spinach. This is New Zealand spinach. And it's really good. It's like a lettuce. It's actually very good. And it loves the heat. It grows in the heat. I've been picking at that plant for a while. <laughs> okay. Over here is a microgreen setup. Another microgreen setup. And what we did is we filled these trays... And I punched some holes in them. These are industrial growers trays. And then I have our industrial HTPE blue trays. It's Philippi gravel. 
We have a piping system back there with a nozzle that goes down and a valve and it's spraying because the water's on and uh, the hose is just a piece that had the end cut off. And um, I guess I need to put another hose clamp on there or something, tighten that up. I have experienced some damage to my microgreens. Um, I just, in fact, got these out today. Uh, we've had a massive heat wave uh, pretty early. We don't usually get into the 90s this early, but into the uh, mid 90s and it's causing some problems with my radishes and, and lettuces and different microgreens that I grow. But I have found uh, some evidence from, from research that I can grow these in the shade with adequate water supply and they should do fine. So we're gonna try this method and that's a new experimental method. Um, what, the question then becomes, why am I not growing them inside in controlled circumstances like I did last year under artificial lighting? Well, there's a, several reasons and, and one of them is because even with the artificial lighting extremely close, they get very leggy. And the other reason is as well as I built those shelves, my kids constantly climb them. And I am excited and ecstatic that they love to climb up and, and pick little snacks off the wall. That is fantastic. Except that they're then using that as a reason to jump off the furniture and do all kinds of rowdy things that ultimately end up in, Dad, I hit my head. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to turn this on just real quick so you can see the generally how it would work. Or how it does work so you turn this on and you can watch this water come out here and it'll flood the trays which then wicks up into the blue trays which then wicks up into the black trays and the excess flows out these holes that i punched uh to to drain it and you can see some of them are already starting to well, am i should i be collecting that water yeah probably i've got a gutter um remnant that i might put on here and some other stuff i did put the edge does have drip cap right here does have a piece of leftover drip cap that I had on it and so this is just a uh, three-quarter plywood and two by fours and primer and a piece of drip cap that's really all this table consists of okay I'm gonna let that run for a minute so you guys can kind of see we'll come back and check on here all right moving over to this area I need to mound potatoes that is something that has been on my to do it do it do it do it do it list and uh Something is always getting in the way. Mostly, it's been rain. Rain, 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 rain. All right. These are our BBJ-style um, carrot boxes. They seem to be working. Um, are there carrots in here yet? No. But they seem to be working, and I have followed the instructions from BBJ. By the way, that's Bumblebee Junction. Great channel. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Um, they don't need any help from me. But uh, I've learned a lot by watching their channel. So, great channel. So, these are carrots. Again, heavy rains last night. Uh, some of them pop back up. Some of them haven't. Uh, you guys have seen the salad bowls. I'm about ready to discard some of the salad bowls. The spinach tastes fine. It's not going to last much longer, so we're probably just going to eat it. Okay. And then... These are harvest potatoes. This is what I had left over from the potato patch. We just put them in there. Okay, same thing here. These are Adirondacks. And then we have another solid bowl there, which has just been got, getting tore up. That's not even, even uh, worth eating out of that one. Uh, here we have another carrot box. 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 I've kind of been going maybe a little BS crazy. With uh, planting the carrots, and that's because I've had very, very little success in the past with them. And now that I'm starting to see some success, I'm kind of like, yeah, let's do some more, let's do some more, let's do some more. Not to mention, uh, the type of carrot I'm growing should fetch a, a decent, uh, decent profit at market. Okay. And then, okay, so now the system's starting to flood a little bit. Let's go back over here and take a look. So basically, what happens is, is it just fills up and then it fills into the tray and then it wicks into and I, I fear that my radish greens are toast I don't think they're gonna come back uh, from that and I didn't have this completely ready and then we got several days of 90 degree heat followed by rain 
This is a spinach mustard green. That is also, to me, it's very delicious. Um, I gotta get, gotta get it marketed right because it'll sell if I can get it marketed right. And then we have our lettuce blends here, and more lettuce blends here, and then basil. Um, spices I usually do pretty well with spices. The basil takes a little while to come up, and when you get this where it's you know about like that much taller than it is now, then these will most likely go because. One, they smell delicious, and two, it's a living plant, and you just clip it off as you need. Okay, so you can see here that the water level is just in there enough to allow the, the PET trays, the little black trays, to wick, start wicking up from the HDPE trays, which is also inside an HDPE tray, which is then filled with uh, pea gravel and, and flooded now. I'll, I can put this on a timer, and we can flood it or, you know, whatever. And, and as it gets hotter, then, you know, we might have to flood more or whatever. And... This may not even work. Um, if it doesn't, then I'll go back to growing them under lights. You know, so I'll just have to do it uh, in one of the outbuildings versus on my living room wall, <laughs> where my children will not be climbing the uh, the walls to, you know, eat everything. And I don't want to discourage them from enjoying the produce. Uh, I want to encourage them to enjoy the produce, but I also don't want them um, jumping off of shelves that are eight and ten feet up in the air uh and then coming to me going i hurt my head so that's kind of where we are okay uh this is matt with the low cash home said that's the basics of what we got going here uh there we're always adding new things and again if you would like to buy some comfrey from me feel free to uh send an email to i've, I've sold quite a few um quite a few plants um send an email over to the low cash homestead at gmail.com and then I will, uh, I'll reply back with a, with a, uh, a video. It's an unlisted video. Uh, so you have to, you know, contact me to see it. And that will explain all your different options on shipping because I'm just shipping everything in flat rate boxes. Um, that's the most viable option for where we live. Thank you very much. Have a great day.